Bravo Lions Football Review with Coach Caleb Ross. Brought to you by Gibson's Tire Pros. Stivers Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Prattville. CBE. And Mexico Typico. Welcome in, folks, to the week two of the Prattville Lions Football Review. I'm Will Barrett, joined by Prattville Lions head football coach Caleb Ross. Looking back on another hard-fought, get-out-of-dodge victory against the stand-up Elmore Mustangs at Foster Henderson Stadium. And, Coach, you know you've been, you've been in this part of this rivalry for a number of years now, now as a head coach and as a, as a defensive coordinator and as a player before. So you know anytime you go over there, uh, anything goes. I mean, this is kind of deja vu for me. Go back to my senior year, 1996. The final score was 16 to 10. <laughs> we had over 400 yards of offense. Stanhope had about 100. But somehow, at the very end, you had to hold on for a victory. Yeah. Uh, man, that place is unique. I give them credit, man. They, that is a unique place to play. It's always been that way. I'm sure it always will. We'll be, uh, be the same way. I mean, Stanhope's got a good team, good program. Really got a lot of respect for what Coach Bradford does and how they do it over there. Really good guy. Does it the right way, mm -hmm. uh, which I really appreciate. But. That place is magic over there. It is. And they had a really good team. You know, I said all week, man, this was the best team that Coach Bradford's had at Stanhope. Uh, we knew they were going to be good. We knew their defense was uh, the strength of their team. Their front four was as good as anybody we're going to see. Really difficult to block. And we're going to have some good ones. You know, we've got a good one this week. Good defense front row blocking Auburn. But the Stanhope last night, man, they were good. The, the Whitlow kids about as dominating of a D lineman I've seen in a long time. So. We knew it was going to be a big challenge. We jumped out to a big lead, but I think everybody just mm -hmm. like just something just did not feel good about it. You know, yeah. you just knew this was still going to come down to be a four quarter game. But you know, in a tough environment, the field was, it, of course, it storms about an hour and a half before there. The field soaked. I mean, just there seems to be always some elements that you got to deal with when you're over there. So, but um, you know, kudos to them. They got a good team, but really proud of our kids finding a way to win. Well, you saw in week one a blowout win against Watonka. Week two, a gut check win. Uh, against against Stanhope, that's got to that's got to help this team as they move into region play next week. Yeah, any time that you can, and I didn't say we played bad. And looking back and watching film, we made some mistakes at some crucial times that you just can't. That had chances to kind of put the game away, but we didn't. But really thought we played okay. You know, we played didn't play great, but we didn't play bad either. Uh, but any time you can grind it out and still win is uh, is something that is good because a lot of people sometimes you got to learn lessons well you learn lessons and losses but also if you can ever learn a lesson and still win that's obviously a benefit so uh you know I t I, my biggest fear all week and i told the kids was look you just beat wetumpka and wetumpka has got a good team but they're probably not as good as they've been in the last couple of years uh and then you did it on statewide television where everybody got to see everybody's excited and our kids hearing that all week you know, being getting complacent, knowing you're about to go in and play a Stanhope team who last year we beat really good, beat pretty bad at our place. I just thought it could have set up for a really big disaster. And, yeah. uh, but I think our kids prepared well all week. We had a good preparation. We had, it was one of our better weeks of practice. Our kids were focused. Uh, just like I said, man, something about the mystique of that place. And I thought we played good at times last night, you know. But either way, you're right. Proud of our kids. We found a way. And I also go back to say this. Our defense played outstanding. Yes, they did. Played outstanding. I mean, uh, and they were called on time and time again to bail us out last night. And they kept making plays at the end. Uh, and then finally, Stan Hope finally, you know, got in the end zone. And, and uh, But at many shots they were taking, at some point they were. Really proud of our defense. Made the plays. And then uh, on a third and 12 at the end of the game, when yes. I was really worried about putting it back to them, uh, man, we popped the counter for 13 yards to seal the game. Really proud of that. So, and Albert Taggart had a big night. You know? Yes, he did. I thought that that third and 12 run at the end of the game was was probably my, well, maybe them in the, the play of the game. You know, everybody's tired. The offense is, offensive line has been gut checking all night long. That defensive front is is strong, and they did what they had to do to get that first down in. And Taggart with the run, what a what a great way to cap the game. That is, uh, you know, man, we called them there. Uh, they they called us most of the rest of the night about everything, but. I knew in that formation we could spread them out a little bit and they weren't expecting a counter play. Uh, and we were able to trap their ends who had been squeezing pretty hard on that all night and really preventing it from happening. But we caught them getting upfield a little bit so we were able to trap them and, and get a wrapper on, on the counter. And uh, man, Tiger made the rest happen. So that was a big play at a big point in the game. Uh, you know, really proud of his effort. I thought he played an outstanding football yeah. game. Man, made a, 
at times, man, bounced off some tackles, had a spectacular run there to mm -hmm. start the third quarter. Uh, when it looked like he was down, maintained, somehow kept his balance and, and went for about 60. Uh, I thought Keandre Powell played well, man. He come in and, and he runs hard and had a big touchdown run. Uh, really proud of them too. Uh, I'll go back, man. I really thought our line played really well. It don't look it don't look good on the stats, but uh, man, you have to understand how good Stan Hook's defensive line was. Yeah. Opelika had two long runs against them, but besides that, Opelika couldn't really run the football against them. So, really proud of, and they got they they're supposed to have a really strong offensive line. So I was really proud of O line. I thought they gave EJ time. He did get sacked a couple times, but. But we were able to function with our offense. Uh, I think the conditions, uh, it didn't rain, but it was very soggy. It rained all day yesterday. It made throwing the football uh, more difficult. It did. So we weren't able to kind of execute in the passing game that we normally would. Uh, and then a lot of times, too, Stan had a good game plan. They were going to try to take Bates away. They were going to at least try to uh, bracket him pretty much all night. They were going to play two safeties. They were not going to let us run past them. Uh, they were going to make us run the football and have to block their front, which is smart. You know, it's a good call by them, and, uh, and we found ways. And we are, and we're used to this. We know that we know the game plan on that. So we're, we found ways to move the football, but you know, we still can't make mistakes. We had, uh, like we talked about earlier, we, we gave away two touchdowns. Yeah. First half had a chance, dropped the pass, first drive that would have went up, uh, and then had no chance to go down there and sputter it out, and then. Take the opening drive of the third quarter when we're first and ten on their 18-yard line and come away with zero. Mm -hmm. We got away with it last night. We won't get away with it uh, later. You know, we won't get away with this week against Auburn. If you, if you lose those opportunities, you don't you don't win those games. But like I said, you know, going back to individual performances, like I said, really proud of Jack Holman. How about that? Yeah, man, I thought he and not even just the the really good touchdown catch. He played well. He blocked well. Man, he ran good routes. He was open a couple of other times. Played in one of his best games. Had another nice uh, run after catch on the, on the bubble screen. So, thought he played well. Bates had the spectacular run. I know he had two two balls. We wish we could get back. Had a drop on the on the first uh, series, and then we dropped a screen where I really you know uh, that I thought we could have made a play on, but. Uh, but going back to defense, I had to watch it, but man, I know guys that stood out to me, Eric Benson, yes, man, continues to be a player. Obviously, Ian Jackson's presence, I mean, he's a really good player. Javon Furlow, man. Yeah. All he does is make plays. That's all he does is make plays. So you got it, man, you got it. And he, he that's what he did. He just comes from that safety position, made a lot of good plays. Up front, I thought Tim Trotter played well. Uh, he played decent last week. I thought he played well last night, man. He made, he made some big plays. We got a young guy in Carmelo Smith. I know we talked yeah. about him, and he's going to be a really good player. Um, and I know I'm, I'm AP was his usual. James Myers, man, made some good plays. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and then from a kicking game standpoint, I think the most thing I was proud of with Colin, besides hitting the first field goal, was handling the snaps in a wet condition and getting the ball off because they were coming. They were coming to try to block it, mm -hmm. and man, he was able to get one step and get the ball off. His instincts are surprisingly really high. For, for a kid that's really never played football but a second year. He understands, because we work both scenarios where he's got to get one step and get it off in practice and his traditional, you know, his three steps and punt. And and we told him, hey, you know, man, we got to use this when you think, but he already just kind of knew I got to get this ball out there coming. Yeah. So, uh, you know, really proud of that. Hey, it was a win against a rival at their place, which is always tough. And, uh, you know, we survived and, and got to, I guess you can get to live and tell about it. <laughs> exactly. Rival does survive. They win 16 to 10 over the Stand Up Elmore Mustangs. Move to 2 and 0 in the season. Let's take a look at some of those game highlights right now. Tight end sets in tight. Initial give off to his running back Maje Truss, and he is hit behind the line and dropped. No, he's still on his feet. Shook off two tight. Okay. Truss is back there with him, and he's just going to give it up up the middle. And he is. EJ Owsley holds, and it's up, and it's lo definitely long enough, definitely high enough, and. Owsley, shotgun, drops back to pass, play action, looking now, Phil pumps, and now fires. This time it is complete. Trust with him in the backfield. He's going to give it off to Trust. And trust no, it. sir. We're watching a good one. That's Killingsworth loads up the shotgun, hands it off to Trust again, and Trust is Big smack hole. the backfield, bounces off of it. Well, he is a second quarter. Lines up three zip. Owsley, inside give, it's Bates. Bates cuts it back up. Bates has got a little room. Bates in the open field. Bates 40. Bates 50. It's a foot race. One man to beat, and it tracks him down to the 30-yard line. Bates cuts it back inside, still on his feet. Hold on to that ball out. Terry is inside. 
Powell remains in the game at running back. Haven't seen Taggart in a few series, but Powell gets the big call hole. again. Powell on the left side, following his blockers inside the five. Ian. And Powell, Ian. one to the far side, one to the near. Rolls out and falls at the standout 47-yard line. Owsley, the pass, across the middle. Roy pulls it down complete. Hit and plows forward across. Taggart back there with him. Max protect. Owsley wants to pass, has time, lots of time. Nobody popping open. Owsley looking, rolling to his right now, firing into the end zone. Jack Back Coleman. Corner, Coleman. E.J. Owsley from the shotgun. Hands it off up the middle. It's uh, Bates. Uh, excuse me, that's Taggart. Comes off the back and tries to get back to the outside. Good balance. Taggart's on his feet. 35-40, 45-50. Taggart 40. Taggart 35-30. Taggart. Now they got third and one at a 14. Here's Killingsworth, and he's just going to give it up to, to, to Dorenthal, and he is crushed in the backfield. Owsley from the 31-yard line gives up to Big Powell, hole. and Powell's got some room across the 45. Powell loads up the shotgun. He's got Truss flanking him to the rear. He's in some trouble. He's in some trouble. He's going got down. It. We are in onside protect. You're correct. It is an onside kick. Fielded by Bates. Bates. Owsley, two receivers out of side, loads it up. He gives it up the middle to Taggart. Taggart with some room across the 40. Gets first his down. first down. We're going victory formation. Yep. That'll do it. They got one timeout left, and it's a first and ten. Get out of Over 35 years of automotive experience, Gibson's Tire Pros has the answers. Mo thinks we're having trouble with the curb. How should we fix that? Me and Mo are into the same girl. Who do you think she should pick? Do you guys think Mo's nose is too big? Of all these questions, I feel like we should have been life coaches. Nah, let's just stick to tires and automotive. Yeah. Gibson Tire Pros, we advise you decide. back to the Private Lions Football Review. Will Barrett joined by head coach Caleb Ross. And coach, it's time for our favorite segment, Inside the Lions Cage, where we get to, we get to spotlight one of our players. And today, uh, a player everybody knows, number three, Ian Jackson. You even know who he is? I think he's been around for a minute. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, man, what all, you know, man, Ian is, uh, has definitely got his share of uh, headlines and very deservingly. I mean, great family, great kid, great player. What can you say? <clears throat> what else can you say about him, man? He is definitely an ambassador for Private Football. Uh, what an incredible future. Uh, man, I can't think of a better guy to represent and obviously to be on the line, inside the Lions cage. And uh, like I said, get, people get to see a little bit more glimpse of his personality. Great player, great family with a great future. Let's go inside the Lions cage with number three, Ian Jackson. <laughs> Ian Jackson, linebacker, class of 2021. McDonald's. Go to order. Uh, a quarter pound of meal. No. <laughs> meal way. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably the last one. Yeah. Uh, Probably beautiful, crazy. <laughs> uh, Chad with Bozeman. Rest in peace to him. Um, favorite movie from Chad? Uh, Black Panther. Of course. Mm -hmm. Batman. Um, chicken. Any particular place or person that cooks? Uh, no, not really. Just I eat any chicken. 
I would probably say my second grade teacher, uh, Miss Hallman. And uh, I guess because she was just always the nicest teacher to me, and you know, we always had a great connection. Like Between me and her family and Jack, we always had a great connection growing up. Jadavion Clowney. Eric Bisson. <laughs> Okay, would you be baby faces or would you be heels? Heels? <laughs> All buddies the bad guy. <laughs> um I can do Coach Morris. <laughs> Give it to us. Alright guys, we got we got a recovery lift today and uh, you gotta get your body right. You know, game game three starts today, so let's get ready for this game today. You got a little got a little uh, bayou accent in him. You must have just said that. He did. <laughs> Would you rather be able to fly at 10 miles per hour or run 100 miles per hour? Uh, fly. Would you rather see the city of Prattle have a major league lacrosse franchise or have $5? Uh, the first one. <laughs> What's your favorite uniform combination? Uh, the all white. Two weeks in a row, coach. <laughs> we'll wear it next week. How early is too early for Christmas decorations? Uh, too early? Halloween. Amen. <laughs> what is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Um, never get complacent. What do you do when a baby just stares at you in public? Like, doesn't even blink, just maintains intense, aggressive eye contact with that dumb baby face. What do you do? What do you do in that situation? Uh, try to make them laugh. <laughs> All right, finally, let's play some rapid fire word association. I want to say a word, and you say the first thing that pops in your head, okay? Gotcha. Quarterback. EJ. Road game. Auburn. Sleep. Rest. Game day. Intense. Off season. Work. Wizard of Oz. Steel Man. <laughs> coach Ross. Great coach. <laughs> Marcus Jackson. City Council. <laughs> Good job. Uh, I want them to remember me as a leader and someone who brought energy to the whole team and got everyone to play every week and bring the same intensity to every game. Hooray for Prattville, hooray for Prattville. Someone in the stands yelling, hooray for Prattville. One, two, three, four. Who we gonna yell for Prattville? That's who. Mm -hmm. Woo! <laughs> now it's time to spotlight our player of the game from the previous week against Wetumpka. And coach, the first time we've ever given a player of the game to a kicker in a victory. It's Colin Rogers. Yeah, like I said, he I mean, what another talented kid. Uh, had an obviously great game against Wetumpka. I thought he played well last night against Stanhope. Uh, you know, obviously made the big field goal, and I think he kicked every kickoff in the end zone except for maybe one, maybe mm -hmm. two, uh, but had a big night. But I thought his big stat was punting, and not so much that he had great numbers, but in a rush, in a wet ball, damp environment, he was able to handle a snap and get the ball off. Man, very proud of him. We're lucky to have him. He's a talented kid, and he's definitely a weapon, and uh, he's got a bright, bright future kicking the football. Our week one Buffalo Rock Pepsi player of the game in a 40-10 to 10 win over Wetumpka was our kicker, Colin Rogers. Well, the coronavirus pandemic changes a lot of things this, this uh, football season, and one thing that it does change as far as as far as logistics here concerned, is we give out the Buffalo Rock Pepsi Player of the Game during the Coach Ross Review Show. And uh, we're looking back at last week's Player of the Game against Wetumpka. And, of course, it's Colin Rogers, our, our kicker extraordinaire. Kicker, punter, do it all. Con uh, Colin, the difference maker against Wetumpka last week. Talk, talk about that a little bit. I mean, first, first game, you know, last year, didn't really get in as much. It was mm -hmm. new. First year kicking, so... I mean, worked hard over the summer to to get better at field goals, get better at punt, and I mean, I, it just it was big making well, it, making that first one. I mean, 
And then, I mean, EJ, EJ comes out there, and he's, you know, last year he was new. He mm-hmm. was relatively new. And this year he's just holding it perfect every time. So all the ones you missed earlier were EJ's fault? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean, I I think I had one last year. I, I think one, maybe. I think yeah. I was against Foley, and it was like a 20-yard field goal. But that was with Kyle. <laughs> That was Kyle still. Oh, that's what we'll blame it on Kyle. He's not here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, congratulations. It was a, a great start to the season, and a, and a lot of that 40 to 10 win, a lot of that was due in part to uh, to what you were able to contribute. Every time you kick off, it seems like it's sailing seven yards in the end zone. Uh, you, you muscled up since last year. I have been working a lot. I mean, not, not necessarily working out a lot, but a lot of just reps and getting my legs stronger and then still working out, but – not heavyweight, just getting quicker with my feet and stuff like that. What do you think about like when you're re- when you're getting ready to, to put a 45 yard field goal through the uprights? What's going through your mind? What are you thinking about? Uh, I'm really not thinking. I'm, th- I'm thinking about because because I'm an overthinker. So if I if I think about it, I'm I'm probably you know thinking about stepping wrong or <laughs> so. Just thinking about getting good contact and getting through uprights. Now they say that that kickers can be head cases, but you can probably speak to that. that that's a stigma, right? That's not true, right? Would you say? Would you say that's that, that, that's a bad thing or that's a good thing? Or it's true, not true. What do you think? I don't think it's true. Not you, at least. No. This guy's got his head together, got his act together. We're proud of you, man. It was a great job last week. And uh, thank you. Now coming. Now go ahead and heading into on the road again next week, going to Auburn. What do you think about that? Uh, that's a big opportunity, I and mean, to really. Get everyone together, play well, go be a really good Auburn team. Well, this was this is for you, the high school player of the game for Colin Rogers, Prattle versus Wetumpka, back on August twenty first, twenty twenty. Player of the game, congratulations, sir. Thank you, thank you. We'll roll on with the Prattle review show right after these words. With over 35 years of automotive experience, Gibson's Tire Pros has the answers. Mo thinks we're having trouble with the curb. How should we fix that? Me and Mo are into the same girl. Who do you think she should pick? Do you guys think Mo's nose is too big? Of all these questions, I feel like we should have been life coaches. Nah, let's just stick to tires and automotive. Yeah. Gibson Tire Pros, we advise you decide. Final segment here on the Prattville Lions Football Review. Coach, looking ahead to next week, it doesn't get any bigger uh, when you kick off region action in Auburn against the Tigers. Yeah, they got a, they always have a really good program. Coach Weingarten does an outstanding job. I mean, they're one of the most well-coached teams you're going to see. Uh, and obviously this year, man, they're really good. Uh, they got a lot of returning starters from last year's team. We knew that going in. This is going to be a really big ball game. Uh, like I said, they do everything well. They, uh, they, they're, they execute on offense. Probably one of the best defenses you're going to see, and uh, Coach Weingarten's always been known to be out- outstanding in the special teams and kicking game. So, and another you know tough place to play. So, we're going to have our hands full. Uh, we're going to have to go have a great week of preparation. We are. I know every coach says that, but it's true. Well, we're going to have to be prepared. We're going to have to put our. We got to go execute. We can't do some of the things that last night that we did not execute on and expect to win next Friday. Uh, but uh, you know what? I know our kids will go compete. That I can promise you that. They won't back down. We will go put a good game plan together, and uh, we'll see. You know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We're, sure we're, we're definitely looking forward to it. Um, it's a big game. If we, for future down the road, if we want to go and try to get home playoffs and, and win the region, all those goals that we set for ourselves, it starts next Friday night. Got to have this Auburn, one. No doubt. Well, Coach, good luck to you. you got a long week of preparation ahead of you, and uh, looking forward to Friday night. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. We are, too. 
Duck Sanford Stadium will be the site for our next week's game. Our Lions take the road again to take on the Auburn Tigers. Our coverage will begin at 6 o'clock. Kickoff is set for 7. We'll see you there. Go Lions. The Prattle Lions Football Review with Coach Caleb Ross. Brought to you by Gibson's Tire Pros. Stivers Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Prattville. CBE. And Mexico Tipico.